We are in the discussion of one of the greatest companions and one of the greatest humans from the students of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His name is Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. One day a man who was a student to Ali, his name was Dharar ibn Dhamura al-Kanani. He visits Muawiyah radiallahu an. He says, tell me about Ali. He would provide justice. When he would speak, it was knowledge literally gushing from his mouth. A lot of times I would see Ali, he would talk to himself, like reprimand himself. The best thing he liked was simple clothing. He was like one of us. Though he was such a powerful, important person, when we sat with him, we always felt like we were part of him. And when we asked him a question, he always answered. And then he says, as if I can vision him right now, that he's going, he's crying by saying, Ya Rabbana, Ya Rabbana, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord. And then he will say this to the dunya. You've come to tempt me, who was in Badr and Ohad, you try and tempt me. And then he would say to dunya, please don't come, go deceive someone else. Ali radiallahu anhu says, never did anyone ever challenge me to a fight. I fought them and I won. I am that person whose mother, when I was born, named me Haidar, a lion. Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu is no stranger to greatness and, and honor. He is the son of Abu Talib, who is the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the grandson of Abdul Muttalib, who is the grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a very close relationship through family, through lineage. It is important to recognize that his father was a great contributor to Islam, though he did not accept Islam. He supported the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He supported his son and all the support that he gave the Prophet sallallahu And he is the one that encouraged his other son, Ja'far radiallahu an, to join the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It says in the narration, he would hide and pray behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Talib saw that, that his son was praying. He said, what are you doing? He says, amantu billahi wa birasuli. I believe in Allah and his Prophet. When he saw him pray the next time on, on the right side of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he told Ja'far to go stand on the left of the Prophet ﷺ while he was praying. So Abu Talib is a very noble person from the Arabs. And this is the son of Abu Talib, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. He joined the Prophet ﷺ when he was six years old. So he was in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. He has few siblings and they all have a very uh, important element in Ali radiallahu anhu's story. Uh, we know who his father is, we know who his grandmother is. Uh, Ali radiallahu's grandfather is Abdul Muttalib. Ali radiallahu anhu's mother is Fatima, bint Asad. And father is Abu Talib. And Fatima bint Asad is amongst those women who did accept Islam. Ali's father did not accept Islam, Ali's mother accepted Islam. And then Ali radiallahu anhu has his brothers. Of course, his eldest brother is Talib. So his father was called Abu Talib. The next brother after Talib is Aqil. The third brother to Ali is Ja'far radiallahu an, who is buried in Jordan. Ja'far is the same Ja'far that went to Ethiopia. And Najashi accepted Islam by the invitation of Ja'far. And of course the fourth one was Ali radiallahu an. It says that between each son there were 10 years. So Ja'far was 10 years older than Ali, Aqil was 10 years older than Ja'far, and Talib was 10 years older than Aqil. So there was this massive age gap between the brothers. So the sisters are Umm Hani and Jumana. Talib, the eldest son of Abu Talib, did not accept Islam. Actually, he was a captive in the battle of Badr. He fought against Ali radiallahu anh, and the Prophet But the Prophet liked him a lot. He was, they, are, they, are, they had a relationship from before. Aqil accepted Islam. His Islam was delayed. He accepted Islam after the conquest of Mecca. Ja'far accepted Islam. Of course, he was one of the first people to accept Islam. And of course, Umm Hani, 
She is the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu also, the sister of Ali. She accepted Islam and there's an interesting narration where Abu Sufyan and few people, uh, when the Prophet conquered Mecca, they went into the house of Ali's sister for safety. And uh, Umm Hani came out from her house and she says, there are people in my house that no one can touch. Anyone that's in my house should be given amnesty and protection. So the Prophet Sallallahu says, we have given complete protection to anyone that goes into your house. <laughs> right? You can take an enemy, put him in your house, we'll protect them because you protected them. Of course, Jumana was also considered to be Muslim. And Ali radiallahu anhu has his famous children that we all know of. The, the famous children that we know are from his wife, Fatima radiallahu anha. So Ali's mother is Fatima, Ali's wife is Fatima. And his famous children are Hassan and Hussein. And then his daughters are Zainab. They call them Zainab al-Kubra wa Umm Kulthum al-Kubra. It's interesting because Fatima radiallahu anha named her daughters after her sisters who died. Ali radiallahu anhu was a very handsome looking man. He wasn't too tall, he wasn't too short, he had very beautiful eyes, he had a very good look. Though we know that Ali radiallahu anhu accepted Islam when he was 10 years old, who grew up and he was, he was nurtured in a house of revelation, that he was uh, the, one of the first people to accept Islam. Ali radiallahu anhu had a very special love for the Prophet sallallahu Somebody asked Ali radiallahu anhu, how much do you love the Prophet sallallahu And Ali radiallahu anhu said that we love the Prophet sallallahu more than our parents, more than our children. We loved him more than cold water and extreme thirst. We love the Prophet sallallahu more than anything. We would do anything for the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu loved Ali radiallahu anhu and he was very close to Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu says himself, one of the narrations that he narrates are early times of Mecca from the 500. One of those are, I was with the Prophet sallallahu in Mecca, we would walk in the valleys. Every time we walked by a tree or a mountain or a boulder that was resting on a mountain, I and the Prophet would hear the tree say, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. One of the first points that happened when the Prophet migrates to Medina is that he makes brotherhood between the companions. So he gave them economical support, social support. Imagine you have thousands of immigrants coming from Mecca who have no, no finance, no support, and Medina now is going to host them, not only give them safety, but also give them business and pay for their expense. But the Prophet when he came to Medina, he called the Ansar and he said to the Ansar, that uh, your brothers have migrated from Mecca, they don't know anything. Please include them in your, in your business. So the Ansar said, we'll give half of our wealth to the, the immigrants that just migrated. And the Prophet was very impressed. And that's why the Prophet constantly prayed for the Ansar. When the Prophet made brotherhood and sisterhood in a relationship between the Muhajir and Ansar, he didn't make any brother with the, Ali radiallahu anh. So the Prophet saw Ali crying. He said, why are you crying? He was very hurt, like he felt like he was ignored. And he's not a child that's crying. He's, he's, he's feeling that I've been left out. The Prophet ﷺ has given this type of bond between the companions and I've been ignored. You made brothers between everybody, you never gave me a companion. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Anta akhi ya Ali. So Ali, you are my brother. And this is very common where the Prophet ﷺ, uh, treats Ali in a very special way. So, Ali was, of course, a young man. He uh, was in his early 20s and he was single. So there was a woman who worked in Ali anhu's house. She would uh, say to her, Ali, why don't you go and you know, propose to the Prophet for his daughter? And Ali was just like, no, nah, no, nah, I, mean, I, can't, I can't do that. Do you know that people are, uh, proposals are coming for Fatima? Qala, I don't know nothing. And then she says, why don't you go to the Prophet's house and ask for the hand of Fatima? Bint Rasulullah and Ali says, you think the Prophet is going to marry his daughter to a poor person like me? He said, no, just go. Then he got the courage and he finally went to the Prophet house. He says, I was very nervous. So I swear to Allah, God, I could not say a word out of awe in the presence of Rasulullah The Prophet says, you want something? What, you, what brings you here? He says, Fasakatu, I couldn't say a word. Faqar Rasulullah said, it looks like you've come to ask for the hand of my daughter Fatima. And, and he says, naam. Do you have anything for dowry? He says, La wallahi, I have nothing. 
what did you do with that armor that I gave you? And uh, he said, oh, I have it, I have it, but it's not worth more than 400 dirhams. It's... So the Prophet ﷺ said, no, no, go get it. And he brings the uh, armor and he, it says that he either sold it and he brought the money, but the value of that armor was given to Fatima radiallahu anha. And then the Prophet ﷺ gave Fatima something, which is a gift from the wife side to the, also the male side. So the Prophet ﷺ gave Fatima uh, a pillow, a bedding, you know, few uh, basic things, a pot, and it was the basic things they had at home. It, was like, it wasn't a lavish wedding. And uh, he married Fatima radiallahu anha. And the marriage is also very interesting. The Prophet sallallahu said to, to them, he told to Ali radiallahu anha, do not uh, engage in any relationship with my daughter. Don't meet her until you meet me. Don't move into her house or don't move her into your house until you meet me. Like, you know, like when the wedding night, come over. The Prophet ﷺ, um, he, he asked for water, he made wudu, and then he took that water of wudu, and he sprinkled it over Ali and Fatima. Oh Allah, you bless them, you bless upon them, and you bless their children that are going to come from them. So the Prophet ﷺ, there are multiple narrations in their marriage where the Prophet is interfering, in a nice way, in, in, a, in a very kind way. And there's one part of the marriage where Ali who comes home, and he's not happy, they get into an argument. And Ali radiallahu gets up and he walks out from the house. The Prophet sallallahu comes to his daughter's house, he says, Ali? He says, <laughs> they got angry and he walked out. You know, of course you should, take, you should discuss it, but sometimes when you know you're going to say something wrong, it's better to just walk away. He walks out, he looks away, he walks in the masjid, he signs Ali laying on the ground in the masjid. He saw Ali radiallahu laying down and there was dirt all over his body. Oh, you father of dirt. And Ali radiallahu anhu says, the best name the Prophet ever gave me was Abu Turab. And multiple times the Prophet would come in the relationship. And one day, Ali radiallahu anhu heard the Prophet ﷺ got some animals. In their custom, animals was like wealth. Goats and sheep and cows. Like he. So he says, oh Fatima, do me a favor. We are broke at home. We have nothing. Can you go to your father and ask him for some like animals, some cattle? We can milk them, we can eat their meat, maybe some servants that can help us. So Fatima radiallahu anha says, okay. And she goes. She knocks on the door of the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet says, what brings you here? So Fatima radiallahu anha says, Ya Rasulullah, angels, they, they nourish off of praising Allah. But we have no food. The Prophet sallallahu says, there's two times this happened. In one narration, the Prophet sallallahu said to Fatima, give you five goats right now but I can also teach you five statements that I was right now a Jubil came and narrated this narration to me and he taught me this so what do you want you want the five uh, verses of dua or do you want these five animals that if you have this and you use this Allah will suffice all your needs so Fatima was a daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu he said khamsa kalimat ya Rasulullah and the Prophet Sallallahu said say this whenever you have something that you need he says ya awwal al awwalin وَيَا آخِرَ الْآخَرِينَ وَيَا ذَا الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ وَيَا رَاحِمَ الْمَسَاكِينَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الْرَاحِمِينَ He says, oh, Fatima, you say this and all your needs Allah will suffice for you. So Fatima comes home, <laughs> Prophet Ali radiallahu anhu expecting some like goods and wealth, comes home empty-handed. She says, Fatima, you're coming back from the most generous person, empty-handed. So Fatima radiallahu anhu says, says, I left you with the intention to get some dunya, I've returned back to you with Akhirah. So then Ali radiallahu anhu being Ali, he says, this is the best day of our life. This is what happens when you have a husband and wife who are both righteous. Then you get children like Hassan and Hussein. Then you get this amazing family. Let's go to um, Badr. So Badr is a moment where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he, um, he gave the flag of Badr to Ali radiallahu anhu. And he uh, used Ali radiallahu anhu as, a, as one of the leads in the battle of Badr. That the night before of Badr, the Prophet sallallahu was making dua, and Ali radiallahu was standing, and he, said, and he said in his dua, Oh Allah, this group that I have in front of me, if you destroy them, there will be no one to worship you. And that's when Ali radiallahu anhu, of course, he uh, was completely involved in uh, defending the Prophet sallallahu in the battle of, um, of Badr. Let's go ahead. Khaybar and Khandaq. Khandaq is called the Battle of Ahzab, where all the armies, all the allies got together 
to come to destroy the Prophet And uh, the Prophet didn't know what to do, so what he did was he asked the Sahaba, what should we do? And Salman al-Farsi suggested to build a trench. Uh, there was one non-Muslim who uh, tried to run his horse to jump the trench. Amr bin Wudda was considered to be the best fighter that came amongst the Quraysh, the greatest fighter. He jumps over the trench, he's on the side of the Muslims, and he says, he says anyone, come on, who's going to challenge me? Nobody gets up. Ali radiallahu says, Ana, Ya Rasul, please. The Prophet says to Ali, sit down. This man is Amr, the greatest fighter in Arabia. Are you serious? You're young, you're young compared to this guy. Well, Ali wouldn't be over the age of 25, 26 at this time. This is experienced, greatest warrior. Nobody says a word. Everyone ducks. Amr bin Wudda is fully covered from head to toe. Prophet says to um, Ali, sit down, he's Amr, second time. The third time, Amr bin Wudda goes, like, hey, why are you guys so scared? Where, aren't you guys the ones that claim that whoever dies goes to this paradise? And Ali radiallahu says, ya, please, ana ya Rasulullah, please. And the Prophet says the third time, sit down, this is Amr. So Ali radiallahu anhu says, even if it's Amr, I don't care. Prophet allowed him to fight. He says, let's make it very clear, my friend. The answer to your voice has arrived. And the one that's standing in front of you is fully capable. And anyone that's sincere tonight is going to win. And I'm going to beat you so bad that this fight, the story of this will be in the list of the greatest warriors and the greatest defeat that was done in history. Parents are going to tell their children that this was a fight to remember. So Amr bin Wudda goes, he jumped off the horse, got on the ground. That landing, it, it brought this dirt into the air jumps in the air and all the hair is clashing of swords before the dust settles Ali is victorious and this man is down the ground and everyone says takbir Allahu Akbar this is not once another place in Khaybar this happened in Khaybar the greatest fighter from Khaybar was Murahab and Murahab comes out no one's ready to fight this guy he comes to the Sahaba he says oh Khaybar knows who I am this is me and I'm Murahab so Ali radiallahu anhu comes out and he says another poem to him he says I am that person whose mother, when I was born, named me Haydar, a lion. Murahab, he was being reminded by Ali because Murahab saw a dream that he was being um, devoured by a lion. So Ali knows this dream, right? So he said, I am that lion. Ali beats the lights out of this guy. And Uhud, the same thing. Fatih Makkah, Ali. Everywhere you go, the Prophet is giving this respect to Ali. But in Khaybar, there was a moment that you cannot con conclude Ali's discussion without saying this. And there were, there were, the Jews of Medina were protected in these massive forts. And the Prophet and the Muslims could not advance. First day, Abu Bakr was given the flag, the leader. The Muslims could not do anything. The next day, Umar. Then the Prophet said, in the night, on the second night, he says, listen guys, tomorrow I'm going to give this flag to someone that loves Allah and his Rasul, and Allah and his Rasul love him in return. So Umar radiallahu anhu was like, who is this guy? Everyone's like, what? Okay, everyone says we love the Prophet and we love Allah. But imagine the Prophet saying clearly that Allah loves this person in return. So this is a huge badge of honor. It says the Sahaba spent the night praying that the day will come and they will be called. Umar radiallahu anhu says, I never wanted leadership. I never wanted to be in command of any, anything in life. Except that day because that was a testimony that Allah loves me. So we all came at Fajr Salah hoping that we're going to be called out. And we all have our necks arched, hoping Prophet getting our attention. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, in the pitch dark Fajr, after Fajr Salah, he says, Aina Ali bin Abi Talib. And Ali was in the back and he was injured. He had a sickness in his eye at that time. He couldn't even see properly. He says, Wayna Ali bin Abi Talib. He calls him and he gives him the flag. And he says, Ali, Allah will open the doors of this fort and give fatah on your hands. Go ahead. And indeed, he literally says in the narration, one of the doors of the, of, of the fortress was so big that the Sahaba say that we saw Ali holding it in his hand. And when, he, when later on after the battle, we try to pick it up, it was seven of us. And one narration, 14 of us. Ali was using that as a shield and one hand he was fighting. Ali had a sword that had that would come up with two edges. His sword's name was Zulfiqar. It's, it's in the museum still today. And he was just that person that Prophet loved. And when in Tabuk, 
he went out and he didn't take Ali. He told Ali, he just told Ali to stay back. And Ali was hurt. He said, what? Why are you leaving me back? Everyone's going. I want to go. The Prophet said to Ali, you're like Harun where Musa goes to get the alwah, the, the plates, and he leaves Harun back with Bani Israel. So even though that you're not going with me, you're playing another role. So I'm going to keep you back. So Ali radiallahu an, in one last narration to conclude who Ali was, Ali was killed in Iraq by a guy named Ibn Mujim. And while he was getting people up for Fajr Salah, he was stabbed. We know that Ali radiallahu an had a conflict with Muawiyah. And the conflict is a very long conflict, but I want to conclude with one beautiful narration. One day, a man who was a student to Ali, his name was Dharar ibn Dhamra al-Kanani. He was a student to Ali, loyal student. This is post Ali's um, demise. He visits Muawiyah radiallahu an, who was a governor, the leader at that time in Sham, in Syria. So Muawiyah radiallahu an, who says, when he sees Dharar come in, he's known to be Ali's famous student. He says, tell me about Ali. So his student says, please excuse me, I don't want to describe. I, I'm not in the mood. I just can't do it. It's too much for me. So if you're not giving me a choice, and then he starts. He says, he's beyond, he's, uh, Ali, his vision was beyond our imagination. He had this far sight. He was very alert. His sense, his sensory was very sharp. He would sense things. He would see people. He would recognize things. He would speak very eloquently. He would provide justice. When he would speak, it was knowledge literally gushing from his mouth. And every other edge of his discussion was just nothing but wisdom. He wasn't really impressed by the beauty of this dunya. He was, he was above that. He would look forward to the night. Like, he couldn't wait till the night would come so he could pray tahajjud, subhanAllah. And then he says, he was a person who always cried. He was immersed by this constant thought. How can Islam prosper? A lot of times I would see Ali, he would talk to himself, like reprimand himself. The best thing he liked was simple clothing. He was like one of us. Though he was such a powerful, important person, when we sat with him, we always felt like we were part of him. And when we asked him a question, he always answered. He said, though we were very close to him, we felt that he was like our brother, but we would not speak in his presence because of his awe and his demeanor. When he smiled, it was like pearls falling out of his mouth. It was so bright. And then he says, I swear by Allah, when the night would go dark, I used to see him, he would go into his prayer area, he would grab his beard, and he would cry like a person who's lost a family member. And then he says, as if I can vision him right now, that he's going, he's crying by saying, Ya Rabbana, Ya Rabbana, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord. And then he will say this to the dunya, You've come to tempt me, who was in Badr and Ohad, you try and tempt me. And then he would say to Dunya, please don't come, go deceive someone else. Then he would say, I give you three divorce. I don't want you in my area. Don't come in my vicinity. And then he would say, why? He says, Dunya, this is the element of Dunya. The more you go into Dunya, the more lonely you become. He says, in my journey is for Jannah, and I don't have enough good deeds and the travel is very long. And this whole description of Ali was given by the student of Dharar by Dharar ibn Dhamra. It says in the narration, Muawiyah's tears dripped and it literally drenched his beard. It started to like dry his face by his sleeves, just the amount of tears that were just dripping. And the people in Muawiyah is gathering and everyone is sobbing. They're literally crying when Dharar ibn Dhamra is describing Ali radiallahu And then Muawiyah radiallahu says, he said, you have described him precisely. That was Ali. You can't get better than that. That was Ali. And then he asked his student a very sensitive question. He said to him, can you describe your pain at the loss of Ali? Can you describe your agony, your pain? You lost your teacher. He says, my pain is equal to the pain of a mother who only has one child. And that child is in her lap. The agony and pain that mother will have is the exact pain that I have today. These eyes will never dry in crying for Ali. And the heart's pain will never come to rest. This was Ali. And I wish we had more time with Ali. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him, his family, um, the highest position in Jannah. Where the Prophet sallallahu grabbed the hand of Ali and he said to Ali, Oh Ali, should I not tell you that your house will be in front of my house in Jannah? La ilaha illallah Muhammad The Prophet sallallahu came and he grabbed Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein and he said, Allah, I love them all and whoever loves them, I want you to love them. Oh Allah, these are my family, you protect them. I cannot think of a house more noble than the house of Ali. A house where his grandfather is Abdul Muttalib, where his father is Abu Talib, his mother is Fatima bin Asad, who is a, who is a companion, who, who is married to the greatest woman in the world, Fatima, whose cousin is the greatest human in the world, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And then his children are the leaders of the men of Jannah. The Prophet said to Fatima, you are the queen of the women of Jannah, the wife of Ali. And he said to the children of Ali, they are the leaders of all the youth of Jannah. La ilaha illallah. Can you get a better house than this? And that was Ali radiallahu anhu. Pious person, righteous man, gave his life till the last moment. 